Bermuda's tremendously successful tourism season, you had my loyal shadow tourism minister trying to deflate Bermuda's tourism growth and success. At the same time, at the same time, Mr. Dodwell is one of the primary beneficiaries of the PLP's hugely successful tourism development strategies. He has been using the 2002 Hotel Concessions Act to upgrade and expand his property. He is now on a $50 million luxury condo project facilitated by your government's policies. If there's a greater contradiction or a more blatant example of hypocrisy, I have not seen it. Mr. Dodwell, incidentally, is building more hotel rooms on previously undeveloped land. But I don't see the pressure groups agitating action against him. With all of our success, there's room for growth in our hospitality industry. However, your government will not open the gates to just anyone. Bermuda is too small. We cannot enter the gates of mass tourism. With a tourism product as hot as Bermuda is currently, we are in the envy position of being able to cherry pick from among the premium hotel brands in the world. It continues to be a puzzle as to how our opponents can even think of objecting to Jumeirah in Bermuda. Jumeirah is the most luxurious, the most prestigious, and the most coveted hotel brand in the world. Jumeirah has created the world's only seven-star hotel in Dubai. There isn't a destination that would not lay out the red carpet for Jumeirah, but the UBP wants to block Jumeirah. These people need to have their heads examined. When I first went into tourism, I found out something very important. I kept asking the um, staff to come to meetings. And they would always say, I can't make it because I have another meeting. Finally, I asked, who are you meeting with? And nine times out of 10, it was one hotelier or another. When I went to Puerto Rico to represent Bermuda at the Caribbean Hotel Association conference, the young man who worked for tourism was rushing out to get my credentials so I could join my ministerial colleagues in, in a meeting. And he came in and he said, here it is, minister, here's your badge. So I looked at the badge. And everybody else's badge said, Minister Michael Missick, Turks and Caicos. Minister Noel Lynch, Barbados. Mine said, Ewart Brown, Bermuda Hotel Association. <laughs> that was a rude awakening, because I realized then that we had to put into perspective the degree of influence that the hotel sector had on the actual operation of the tourism department. Bermuda has not built, as I said, a luxury hotel in 35 years. The PLP is ending that long drought, that long famine, that dismal scenario with the world's most glittering prize among hotel properties. But why is it so difficult for the opposition to understand this? What is it about excellence, leadership, and opportunity that they cannot understand? The reason, of course, is that they are in deep denial. And I'm going to explain to them that denial is not just a river in Egypt. It will be traumatic for them to learn that Jumeirah is not the only premium brand knocking at the door. Ritz-Carlton. St. Regis, and I'll go back and say the Ritz-Carlton will be here, but Mayor of Hamilton, we need your support. St. Regis and Intercontinental are also knocking. These are premium global brands 
They all want to be part of the Bermuda action. All this means is that the government of Bermuda has won the respect and the trust of some of the most influential people in world tourism. Bermuda today is winning rave reviews on Wall Street, and Wall Street doesn't part with its money easily. They look at the project. They look at the stability in a country before they send in millions and hundreds of millions of dollars. Major players are bullish on Bermuda. That would not be happening if Wall Street was not convinced that the PLP government is a blue-chip government, a proposition that is solid, solid as a rock. The Deputy Premier and I were in Washington, as she mentioned, at the start of the summer. We worked the halls of Congress with our good friend, Council General Slayton. You should know that some of the most influential lawmakers in the world's most powerful country have a great deal of respect for our little Bermuda. They respect the way we are running it. They respect the way we manage the country's finances. They respect the way we market ourselves to the world. We have an influential circle of friends in Washington, D.C. They are valuable partners in moving Bermuda forward. We've taken this message to television because we think all of Bermuda should see how the win-win relationship we have developed with our American partners is bringing benefits to both of our countries. Tomorrow, I head back to Washington, D.C. to speak before a group focused on building stronger ties between the United States and the Caribbean. The Caribbean Caucus on Capitol Hill understands that Bermuda carries the capacity to be a leader in this effort, and they have asked for the input of the people you have elected. I will represent Bermuda proudly, and I will lead because that is what you have empowered me to do. Strong as our reputation is around the world, I'm about continually building the Bermuda brand. Our cricket teams are doing a great job in building the Bermuda brand internationally. Bermuda's cricketers were everyone's favorite at the Cricket World Cup Finals in the Caribbean. On top of that, our under-19 team has done Bermuda doubly proud. Let's hear it for them. Our young cricketers thump Canada to make Bermuda under-19 champions of the Americas. In the process, Bermuda qualified for the finals of the Under-19 World Cup. That was a double whammy within it, a triple triumph for Bermuda. There's more. In fact, there's much, much more. There's Dwayne Sluggo Levrock, who was one of four cricketers from the Caribbean and Americas nominated for the ICC 2007 Cricket Awards. Other nominees included Steve Buckner, Shanda Paul, and Brian Lara. Duane Levrock is in pretty impressive company. Let's wish Sluggo well as he continues to be an ambassador for Bermuda. Now let's put our hands together for both of those groups, the under-19 cricket team and the under-13 cricketers who did very well down south. Ladies and gentlemen, you know as I do, everybody knows, that the spectacular successes of our cricketers could only have happened under a caring, nurturing, far-sighted, and innovative PLP government.